tell me, I mean, remember what we said about setting the term mechanics. What are the steps you have to follow? Mm -hmm. First thing, you have to have a clear idea okay. of what? Uh, the passive units, the active units. Okay. Uh, I, uh, the passive units are all the teeth. Yes. But the canine, okay? Yes. And that's very simple. Now, let's analyze the movement of the active unit. And what do you, why do you need to analyze it? So, the, the best... Uh, um, so this is the movement. I've already drawn the movement. And to make things easier for you, you have also the, the center rotation. And what would you look for? Oh, you are not in the black box today, yeah? Very much lighted. Very well. So what, what would you... Uh, look for a retraction and in the same time to change the tipping of the canine no that's not the answer i wanted to know dr hennaway yes doctor <laughs> what should we find from the analysis of this movement okay uh first we need to find the, the final position after we okay find it's already there yeah. the final position is there i gave to you i mean it's we need to find uh, the moment force ratio and the single force that gave for us this uh, movement okay let's say the better you need to find the force system that you need to move this tooth in this way so i have stressed this very much you don't think to a cantilever system if you don't have any clue about the force system you need Okay, so the first thing, especially for you that I can, mind you, I consider all of you beginners, okay? I hope you're not offended about that. No. So, Zafar is not a beginner, but all the others are beginners. Oh, I see also Ristina is here, but anyway. Those part participating to the course for me are beginners. So, the first thing you have to do everyone but especially you is to have a clear idea of what is the force system and uh, you said correctly we need to find the single force which is equivalent to the needed force system at cr okay so you get a force and remember the force corresponds to the movement of the center resistance you get a moment and the moment looks with a concavity towards the center of rotation and the moment to force ratio depends on this distance if we assume that this distance is let's say 12 millimeters i would say that the moment to force ratio is five okay that's an estimate, it could be six, it could be four. Now, this is not so important. You follow me? Okay, so let's say that, that we have a moment to force of four, and this means that four millimeters, now I have to, I will take everything away four millimeters away from the CR, but with the direction that is parallel to the movement of the CR, we have the single force. Okay. If you don't know this force, it's very hard to guess the right force system, but you don't have to guess. You have to find out. It's different, you know? So now we have the force that is four millimeters away. Uh, what is this force indicating to us? Final position. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear very much. The final position? No. 
The final position, I, I already know it. I mean, I have already established that. It's here. Here I have this, I, I draw this line. Why did I draw it? Think that we're, we will be working with cantilevers, okay? Mm -hmm. So why, for which reason did I draw this line? Line of action. The line of action of the force. And what is, why is this so important now? To see in which direction we have to activate the cantilever. Uh, yes, but even more important. Maybe it's a point of ligation. Yes, very good. I mean, the combination of this, the Oana and Milka gave the right answer. First of all, the point of ligature of the cantilever has to be along this line. Of course, I don't think we are going to make a ligature here, but maybe we can make it somewhere here, right? And this inclination tells us the direction of the force. Now, I have to ligate my cantilever along this line of action. So what do I do? An extension. An extension. So I take what kind of wire? Very rigid. A very rigid, a very stiff wire. So let's say that I'm taking a stainless steel 1925 and I bring it here. Okay. And here I can make an eyelet like that, an eyelet or a hook. Okay. So this is the extension and I need the extension because the line of action of the force is here. If you don't have the extension, what would happen? I mean, even if you make the best and correct cantilever, what will happen if you don't make the extension? Different moment for ratio, different position. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear the, the speaker. Different, different moment uh, to force ratio. You're right, right. If you apply the correct cantilever here, what do you get? A larger moment. Okay, sorry, the CR is here. You get a larger moment. And this is a larger moment of force ratio. And then what happens for your, from the clinical point of view? More rotation. Than... Yeah. And this means that at the end, the canine will be too... Upright. Too vertical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So probably it's not a huge problem, but try to understand the way we try to make the perfect cantilever or the best we can, okay? If you just say, okay, I attach a cantilever here, what I would probably anticipate that you will have too much rotation and a canine that at the end would be a little too vertical, okay? So, this is interesting. And so I, I take this away. Now, we have the last part. So we have to use a cantilever. Where would you, there are several mechanics you could use here. But now think to the cantilevers. I wouldn't use a cantilever, but we use, we discuss about cantilevers now, okay? So there is uh, a good reason to do it. So let's imagine that as in a standard appliance here, you have an auxiliary tube. And since here is the point of attachment, 
I can imagine that my cantilever is attached here. But what configuration of those you know, we're talking only about minor configurations, would you use? Now everyone answers in the chat. Okay. Or I think we have, uh, because there are three possibilities, V band, harmonic or logarithmic. Okay. By the way, I'm asking you to, to make the chat and, and I can find the chat, here it is. Okay, okay. Excellent, so it's logarithmic. Now I want some of you, well, I, I think Dr. Hanawi is the best candidate because it's his case. I want you to draw. Can you draw the cantilever? Uh, okay. I uh, think but, uh, you can draw... annotate. Yeah, from where, from where, from where, from where, annotate, yes, here. Uh, draw. Okay. As a moment to force ratio is uh, blue 10. So we need to make uh, the I mean, I already told you it's engaged in the in the molar It's ligated here. Uh -huh. You okay. have you have only to draw the, the cantilever with the logarithmic because everyone has said that. so. Okay. Me, uh, I need to draw you draw the passive shape. Yeah. One second. More, more shorter, short. And down. Look at my face. Okay. <laughs> Second. It's hard, huh? Think huh? that you're working on a patient and you don't even know how to, to bend this wire. Because I make it by... I make it by a different way, but if, uh, for example, doctor, I think it needs to be with my way like this, but I know it is wrong. No, but, but look, now we said we need a logarithmic shape. Okay, and everyone agrees on that. So everyone wrote in the chat and I have approved that. Okay. okay. So now do a logarithmic shape. Logarithmic. And after this, I need to make a check from the middle of the disc. Yeah, but why do you want to intrude this tooth? Tell me, is there a special reason that now you are cheating? No. You know, you want to make fun of us? No. No. Okay. I would say... One second. Closer. Now you should draw the passive shape, please. Passive shape? Okay. Yeah. He okay. needs to because I don't have a mouse. Okay, I will draw it for you, okay? That's an excellent excuse. You don't have a mouse and there you are, okay. So, let's assume that this is a, the, the first cantilever. Remember what we do? First, we do a, a passive cantilever like this one. 
-hmm. And then we do the logarithmic. The logarithmic is something like this. Okay? So your passive shape is this one. Okay? So this was a, a, a simple, I mean, a simple problem. Clinically, it was not difficult. But if you follow, anyway, but there are so many things you can make in the wrong way. Look, you can make a wrong, I mean, you can just, okay, I try it. And in this way, you have a lot of possibility to, to make a mistake, okay? Then you can make a mistake in analyzing the movement in finding the full system. And then now there is this part, which is the um, design. But if you follow the steps one by one, you say, okay, this is the line of action of the force. I make the extension to reach it. I need uh, not a vertical force because if I was needing this force, I would have had a cantilever with an harmonic curvature. If I was needing this force, I would have had a V band. So it's very rational. I mean, you're not just, okay, let's try it. Now I'll tell you what I would have done rather than using a cantilever because when you want to extrude teeth, as I said, uh, my occlusion is not going to help with the anchorage unit. So if I use a cantilever from the posterior, what is happening uh, for the posterior teeth is that we have a moment like this. And occlusion will not prevent the premolar to be intruded. So unless I have a TAD or unless uh, this group requires this moment, I wouldn't use a cantilever. Okay. And there is a very, very simple solution, a vertical elastic with a little bit of inclination. But it's so simple. Okay. Now we did the cantilever because we had to make an exercise for our brain for all the steps. But personally, in this case, I would do the extension, make a hook here and let the patient wear an elastic with a slight distal orientation. Okay. Does it make sense? Everything that we try to do should make sense. You shouldn't just, okay, let's throw it. Let's find it. So you see, it's a very simple thing you have to do. And the mechanics you posted, it doesn't fit with this. Okay. So, so this is every... Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes, Michael. Okay. Um, two things. First of all, um, I've, I've got a similar situation in, in, my, in my practice right now, uh, but the, the canine is very severely uh, mesially rotated. Uh, it's actually superimposed onto the lateral. So I've just been wondering how we can uh, derotate and extrude at the same time, or maybe uh, we do a cantilever to first derotate and then follow that mechanics. I don't know. Okay. Please, uh, please give me an advice. That, that's very interesting. The problem is, uh, that's a 3D problem, Michael. It's really a 3D okay. problem. And would require a vector that we cannot reach at once. So we need a, a quite complex two vector mechanics. Okay. Uh, or you make the two movements once at a time. So first you place it like this, and then you make the rotation. Uh, okay. If you have to do this, and at the same time you're planning to correct the rotation, 
uh, the vector will be out of the working area, would be out of the mouth, let's say out of the cheeks, probably. And this is not possible with one cantilever, of course. So for now, you, as I said, you are beginners and we have to, to do the simple thing. What I would recommend in your case that you first, I mean, if you want to keep things simpler, I mean, I like to do everything at once when possible. But sometimes in order not to build up an extremely complex appliance, it's okay to, to split the movement in, in two steps. And I would say that since, uh, and I, I repeat that, I consider you beginners, probably this is the safest way to do it. So first you do this movement and then you will think about the rotation. So in this way, things are definitely simpler. Okay. If there Thank are, you very much. You're very welcome. If there are no questions about these examples, uh, we go on.